in the past two years, we've RV'd to 39 different states. We've met a lot of interesting people. There's one person that we met that really stands out. We happened to be at the same campground in Glacier National Park. And I was walking the dog around the campground and I was kind of being a creeper because he had a road warrior too. So I was checking it out, looking at the model. And as I was doing it, the guy came out. We ended up having such a good time that one thing led to another and I found myself inside of his road warrior interviewing him about why they're traveling. What'd you do before this? Uh, With the fishing and... The, the fishing, I was a uh, 2012, I uh, was a uh, SK national champion and uh, 2013 was the uh, uh, US Open uh, water champion uh, and uh, um, ran a business uh, installing uh, networks for hospitals in uh, Florida, Louisiana and Texas and uh, we're still owning the business but uh, we have a manager now and allows us the uh, ability to travel with uh, two big dogs. <laughs> in 2009 I had cancer mm -hmm. in my abdomen and uh, they removed it and um, um, I had to remove uh, seven yeah. inches of my colon, seven inches wow. of my small intestine, section of my liver, my omentum mm -hmm. and um, uh, my spleen mm -hmm. and then uh, in 2015 and I had had kidney disease and been treating it with steroids and stuff mm -hmm. and in 2000, uh, February 2015 the scar tissue caused a blockage in my small intestine. Wow. So they had to open me back up yep. and remove the blockage. And then um, my stomach went into paralysis, mm -hmm. wouldn't process food for two months. Um, and during that time, because they were feeding me through a tube, my kidneys uh, failed. Wow. So um, that was, I got out of the hospital uh, March 31st. I was in for two months exactly. And then uh, Penny uh, went and got certified on the machine. Wow. And how to huh. do it, she actually uh, hooks me up and I have uh, mm -hmm two uh, holes um, we had dialysis today wow. and they have these things they're called buttonholes that mm -hmm. are supposed to form yeah and uh, I'm so fortunate that I heal so fast that I won't form a buttonhole huh. so she has to uh, oh go in every time and every time with yeah. a needle it's a uh, 15 gauge wow. needle um, which is smaller than what they use to tranquilize bears with Wow. So I'm like, the bears get better treatment than I do. Right. So the diocesan machine allows us a lot of freedom. Mm -hmm. um, we There's clinics all over the United States yep. so that we can go and pick up um, the supplies that we need as mm -hmm. we need them. Yep. Um, the machine is fully compact. Um, uh, it's got its own heater. The dialysate, the solution that uh, draws everything out, is heated here before it goes in. The other bags hang here, which drain into this one. The saline solution is over here, hangs there. There's uh, cartridge filters that each one goes into here. And then it has a tube that uh, filters out all the impurities in my blood. Mm -hmm. uh, my kidneys still are uh, producing urine, mm -hmm. um, about two liters a day, so that's good for me. Mm -hmm. um, but um, potassium and everything like that build up in my blood, which is hard on my heart. And everything, yeah. So the dialysis filters out all the uh, chemicals that uh, my kidneys don't right. um, and uh, we just found out uh, when we were in uh, Mount Rushmore that uh, I've been approved for the transplant list. So, wow uh, congrats! Have, yeah that's a big goal for us but uh, wow. right now this is um, it'll probably take uh, two to three years before we get um, approved for a transplant right so it gives us uh, the next couple of years we're going to go travel yeah and go all over the united states and uh maybe even get into canada yeah and i've uh, never been there mm -hmm. um and uh you know it's the thing that's really good for us is being able to be in the camper and everything like that is we can carry our supplies with us um and everything but cruise ships and stuff like that you have to use their dialysis machine and she's not allowed to uh handle Right. Um, somebody else's machine. Yeah. Um, they won't let you. They have to use their nurses and their doctors and everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like they won't let you bring your own machine on, even though it's our machine. They won't let you bring it on board. Right. So this is a great option for us. You know, we want to travel. We want to see things. We want yeah. to, you know, enjoy our retirement. And this is our option. And the camper fits yeah. in perfectly in that. I mean, it really is a home on wheels. Yeah. Um, oh, why the road warrior? 
Road Warrior, um, the, uh, um, the layout mm -hmm. was perfect for us. With um, uh, It gave us enough room um, that this area can be uh, either used for my dialysis center in the garage, mm -hmm. can house my motorcycle. Still all my supplies for my dialysis is out mm -hmm. there. There's plenty of storage. It's not, you know, a lot of the campers, you don't have the storage space. Right. This also has the uh, generator mm -hmm. um, so that if a part doesn't have the power that I need to run my machine, we have the generator to as emergency backup mm -hmm. for uh, to run a dialysis machine. Um, the three air conditioners make it really good for us, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, uh, if we're in, if we've done uh, dialysis in the garage mm -hmm. in the areas where the weather is uh, perfect, you know, 60, 70 degrees, we can set up the dialysis and machine in the garage where mm -hmm. I can sit out on the patio and, yeah. and just enjoy things. Right. Um, it's, it offers all the features that we needed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that was the important thing is, you know, and you know, it's, I tell you, um, it's easy. It's user friendly, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, um, IT person. Mm -hmm. uh, so I work with computers and telephones and networking and everything like that. Um, but when you're, you know, at home and everything like that, you want stuff that's user friendly. You right. don't want to have to go through a six week course to learn, course to learn how to use something. Yeah. This uh, made it easy. You yeah. Know, it's everything is labeled, prepared ready to go uh, uh dialysis centers in this area now mm -hmm. as we get into seattle mm -hmm. there's more and as we get right. into california there's even more yeah uh and they're even they're growing now um so our next stop when we go to uh towards seattle mm -hmm. is they have a, a clinic there that will restock all of our supplies mm. uh last us another six weeks yeah you know that wow. we won't need anything um and the other thing is is um that's a lot of these clinics um, they work with the people and even if you don't want to pick up supplies, you can call and say, you know what, um, I want to come in and do my dialysis at mm -hmm. the clinic mm -hmm. and you can go in and they'll do the dialysis treatment for you. Um, I think this type of story, you, what you guys are doing is super inspiring for a lot of people. If right. they knew it's Here's the thing. possible. A lot of people, this is the sad part. A lot of people who have dialysis, stuff like that, mm -hmm. they end up spending their life sitting on their couch. Yeah. Yep. and uh, waiting for the phone call that they may be able to get a transplant or right. something like that. Or not even that, if they don't even want to go through the transplant, they've just reside themselves to, yep. you know, looking out a window and watching life go by. Yeah. We're going from here to Spokane, Washington, and then from Spokane, Washington to Seattle, and then Oregon, we're going to check out all the waterfalls in Oregon. Uh, we hear that that's got more waterfalls per, per square mile than any other uh, place in the world. Um, and then Northern California, and then back through uh, Colorado and uh, over to Tennessee, and then back to Florida. And uh, Florida will be there for a couple months, and then back to Tennessee for uh, hunting season, and then back to Florida, and then uh, back to the next year is going to be the East Coast, all mm -hmm. the way up through Maine. And uh, you know, really plan on getting our uh, use. Out of the road warrior, yeah, you know. it's just so cool. You know, we we've yeah. gone and done so many different things. And yeah, I mean, it's really, I mean, especially um, in my health conditions. You know, with the the fighting the cancer and then you know getting over that and then the kidney disease, this has allowed a whole new world for us. I mean, you know, I was always big on outdoors, uh, hunting, fishing, and everything like that. And I had to give up a big part of that in my life. Um, you know. Um, just because the body can't take the pounding of you know the, the fishing and everything, but this is you know luxury on wheels. It's mm -hmm. just you know it's not physically demanding. The self leveling system, the auto jacks and everything like that. It's mm -hmm. a push of a button. Yeah. You know the it's not like it used to be back in uh, our father's uh, days right. of camping and everything like that. You know where it was all you know manual labor to set up a camper right. you know you crack the jacks down mm -hmm. um you know if it had a slider or a pop out or something like that you had to manual manually yeah. do it you know yep. everything was manual labor and you know uh, at this point i could probably still do it but you know a year or so from now i physically may not be able to do it this camper allows me to still function yep still go out and enjoy things yeah the next day they hit the road on their big adventure they've got goals They've got a plan, and they're turning a tough situation into a reason to get out and enjoy life to the fullest. His story is really inspiring, 
And it just goes to show you that you shouldn't let things hold you back from traveling. 